It was coming up to Christmas and I didn't know how the hell I was going to go on. And I thought I was going to have to sell my house. And we now had a kid, Paul and myself. So I was really worried. And uh, I went home after another depressing day. It was the third week of the single and nothing was happening. Whatever sales were going were really petering out. And I went in, I went home and I turned on the TV. And I was just looking comatose at the TV and then the news came on. It was October the 24th. And the reason I was at home was because I simply didn't have any money to go out. And uh, I saw this thing on TV. And uh, it was the Michael Burke report in Ethiopia. And um, probably because I was in such a depressive state, it reacted so strongly to me. You know, I was quite morbid anyway. And uh, I saw these children and this nurse and this wall and this incredible suffering. And um, I literally couldn't believe it. Paula started crying and um, went upstairs to look at Fifi. And um, like I sat there like stunned by this thing. You know? And um, the next day I came down and Paula had written a thing on the fridge saying 200 pounds. Anyone who visits this house must contribute five pounds. So that's neat. I thought, and uh, I didn't have any money particularly. So I thought, well, oh God, maybe I can make a record or something. But if I make it or the rats make it, no one's going to buy it. Um, well, if I ring up some people, you know, and Paula, because she worked on the tube, which is an English pop shop. Mm. Um, was basically paying the bills. And I had n I now knew quite well people like Duran Duran and Spandau Ballet, but knew very well. And I thought they were good blokes. And it was made more so by the fact that they were so different to my generation of bands. You know, the 78 thing, this thing we were talking mm. about of this bitterness and anger between the bands and hatred. These guys were very friendly. Maybe because I wasn't a rival, maybe they were rivals with each other and were unsure of each other, which they are, but they're friendly towards mm. each other, unlike my crowd. So um, I went into the office and I thought, well, I'll, I'll say, you know, something. And if they all laughed, then I won't do it. I was in the press office. I said, uh, oh, I'm thinking about doing this record for this thing I saw about Ethiopia last night. And like everyone immediately said, yeah, great, what are you going to do? What's it going to be called? Who are you going to get? Literally, it was like that. And Linda, who was the secretary in the press office at the time, said, oh, I've got someone who's going to Eritrea. I'd never heard of Eritrea, you know, with the jeep, but they're having problems getting through the border. Can you help them? I just walked into the thing, you know, like, and suddenly I've been hit with logistics problems about jeeps at borders, like, you know. And, like, and I, I said, what are you talking about, you know? So um, I got on the phone, I rang Paula, and I said, who's up there in Newcastle where they do the tube? And she said, Midge is here. And I'd known Ultrafox for a long time. Midge came on. And I said, listen, did you see that thing? And he said, yeah. And I said, I think, you know, like maybe we should do a record, like loads of people. And he said, yeah, that's not a bad idea. He said, have you got a song? Now, I was embarrassed to say I had a song because these were the guys having the hits. Mm. I was having the stiffs. So I said, oh, yeah, I got a... Well, I got a couple of ideas, a bit of a thing, you know, but, uh, like, if you've got anything, let's do it, you know. And he said, well, I'll come up with a few ideas. And I said, yeah, great. So I thought, bloody hell, that's one. Well, two of us don't make a record, you know. So I rang Sting. Now, the bizarre thing is the fact that any of these people are here in the country is weird because, as you know, they're either off recording in another country because yeah. of tax or they're off on holiday or they're off touring. It's very weird. Like, usually they just use this as home base and they're off. Sting was at home. He'd seen it, the thing, and said, absolutely, I want to do something very seriously. You know, like, I mean, he was really serious about it. I rang Le Bon. They were in town. I couldn't believe it. Um, what said? He said, yeah, can't assume. We're going to Germany. We'll be back. Bloody hell, I've got the police. Duran Duran, Ultrafox, you know, three of the biggest bands at the moment. That night, I was walking home, and uh, I live in Chelsea, and I was passing an antique shop, and I saw Gary Kemp from Spandau Ballet in the window looking at something, you know, he was inside the shop, so I started pressing my face against the window, it was going like this, and, you know, 
he started doing the back and he said, Come here. I went in, he said, what are you doing? I told him, and he said, oh, can you wait till we get back from Japan? I said, yeah. So by the time I got home, you know, suddenly you were four band, five with the Rats, mm. four of the major bands you know, at the time. And I thought, geez, you know, now I've got to actually do it. And uh, so Midge sent down a tape of this do 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 and I rang him up. I said, that's a rip off of Zed cars. He said, well, send all right with whatever you've ripped off. You see, so I went up to his place and I played the feed the world song. Now I'd written the words before I went over to his place in a taxi drive over to a mate of mine's place, um, and even this is bizarre because I wrote them straight off very quickly, what I, whatever it was I wanted to say. And I got to his place and he was in bed. He's a sculptor, and his mum was looking after him. And uh, he said, "What are you doing? You this crappy old look, Spanish guitar on the wall. You know those ones that are all out of shape and everything." And he said, oh, he's a Lithuanian. He says, yes, yes, you must play it to me. So, like, I never do this, but I took down the guitar and I played him Feed the World. And he had been taping the conversation. For some reason, he started taping conversations that day. And so right from the beginning of this thing, there's an electronic record, and there's a tape of me playing him to him and his mum, Feed the World on this broken-up Spanish acoustic guitar, you know. And... Um, I went up to Midges and he said he thought it was great. You know, so I went up to Midges and I played it to him. And he said, yeah, let's try and marry the two bits, my, my riff with your thing. And we thought up the middle part in his place. And then I started singing, feed the world. Because I wanted something like Happy Christmas War is mm. Over, Give Peace a Chance, a chant. I went away, Midge was going to produce it, the record, and uh, started setting up the organisation, which took a long time. And it was, that was because I had to talk to every retailer and the retailers' organisations mm. had to talk to the people who print the labels, who design the labels, who package things, all the ladies who package the factory, asking the workers to work for free, trying to get the vinyl for free, getting the record company to eliminate all costs, which they were glad to do. Um, the publishers to collect money fast, because usually it takes a year to collect money. Um, all those things had to be done. And they were logical. It wasn't that I suddenly had this brainstorm. It was just, well, what else? How do I eliminate this cost? Right, I'll get on to so-and-so. There must be someone who is a major retailer's association. Yes, there is a thing called the... Got on to them, lied my way through things and got us together.